Hey everyone, welcome to the Certified SolidWorks Professional Advanced Surfacing Series. In this series, we're going to be covering everything you need to know to take and pass the CSWPA surfacing exam. This doesn't mean that this series will only teach you about the exam, but rather you will learn everything you need to know to be proficient with surfaces with the added benefit of having the ability to take and pass the exam. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of surfaces and understanding what they are, with the following videos looking at more advanced techniques and real world examples of both fixing and creating geometry, much like you would see in the exam. So let's get into it. Let's first take a look at how we can create surfaces. In our surfaces tab, which if you don't have, you can get by right clicking and enabling it, we see we have some familiar feature names, such as extruded and revolved surfaces being familiar to the extruded and revolved bases. With some other options too, such as filled surface and freeform, we haven't seen in our solid body counterparts. Let's make a few quick sketches to show these features, which will remind us how they work in comparison to their solid body counterparts. The extruded surface is as simple as it sounds. It takes a sketch and extrudes it into a surface. We can leave our sketches open as this is not a solid body and does not need to be closed or have a volume. We can then choose how far we want to extrude it. This should feel similar to making an extrusion with a solid body at this point. Once we have finished our feature, we can take a look at the surface. If it isn't obvious yet, surfaces have no thickness. This is kind of like a sheet of paper, except even paper has a little bit of a thickness. A better analogy is it has the thickness of a geometric plane, except unlike a plane, we can bend surfaces to create more organic and fluid geometry. Surfaces have no real world counterpart, unlike a solid body, which you could just directly 3D print. So why do we even use surfaces? Well, the best way I like to think of it is right in the name. They are useful when we are concerned about the surface layer or the surface geometry of our part. While this is not why they are actually called surfaces, as that is in reference to the zero thickness geometry, this way of thinking helps us when diving further into surfacing as a topic, especially in future videos. We can quickly now run through the rest of our surface creating features, as again they are very similar to our solid body ones. For the revolve, again we do not need to close our sketch if we don't want to, which is true most of the time when working with surfaces. Then we can revolve our sketch to complete it. Next we can create two sketches to make our swept surface. And much like the solid body, we can select the two sketches in our feature manager to complete the surface. Notice yourself that again the surface has no volume, something good to keep yourself reminded of. The last two options here, which are the lofted surface and the boundary surface, are very useful when it comes to creating surfaces. We will just be introducing them in this video, but in the future videos and in your own work, you will find these to be the power workers of surface creation. For the lofted surface, I just create two profiles and use the loft feature. Again, very similar to the solid body version. In fact, if the surface were to have volume, it would be the same as using the solid body version, given the same settings. As for the boundary surface, it is a little different than the solid body version. While I haven't really covered the boundary boss slash base on my channel that much, even though I should more, the boundary surface will be a highlight of the series. 
I've pre-created a part with some sketches to save some time in this video and for you. How the boundary surface works is it takes any amount of sketches you have, which are connected, and creates a surface from it. As you can imagine, this lets you create very fluid geometry with a lot of control, such as the one created here when all connecting sketches have been selected. If you have the time, create some sketches on your own and just play around with this feature to get a sense of its versatility. Playing around with features is, in my opinion, the best way to learn them. And learning this one, in specific, can be very useful for your surfacing journey ahead. Next year, I've created a cut in our surface, which we will learn how to do in future videos. The filled surface is great for issues you have in surfaces, such as fixing imports, as imports sometimes have holes in them that you need to patch up. This is because the filled surface takes the surrounding geometry information to patch up holes such as this one. We can select the edge of this hole, and as we can see the filled surface does an amazing job at fixing it, almost like it was never there in the first place. Lastly, let's take a look at one of the ways we can turn surfaces into solid body parts, which is almost always the end goal of making a surface. This is by thickening the surface using the thicken button. We can choose to thicken it from the middle or going in one direction and of course the thickness as well. We will look at creating solids from closed surfaces, which are basically surfaces that look like a solid on the outside due to there being no holes or gaps in a future video. Thank you for watching the first episode on the basics of surfacing. I hope you have a better understanding of surfaces and how they work, and you are prepared to look at some more advanced techniques and advanced videos to come. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you've learned anything, and I will see you in the next video.